Clerk. This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 6 at sec, notice of which was sent to the record and the star ledger and was posted on the municipal bulletin board. Roll call. Council Member <laughs> Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Here. Council Member Sims. Here. Council Member Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Here. Uh, there's no minutes to approve. Uh, before we move on, I want to... Uh, Acknowledge I'd like to have a moment of silence. Uh, just this past week, uh, Councilman Battaglia's father, Dante, passed away. So if we could have a uh, brief moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, city manager's report. Oh, I'm sorry. Missed yep. the flag salute. <laughs> Everybody, please rise for the flag salute. It's an important part of the night. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now the city manager's report. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, first, an update on Van Wettering. Uh, we have been... Uh, the, the building department has been there uh, taking care of the sidewalks, uh, painting on that building. Uh, they were given notice. And also the building with the, um, I do believe it's the same building that were, they were cleaning the uh, white goods, the uh, appliances out on the street. They didn't right. have a CO. So everything's been going well over there. They've been keeping an eye on it and uh, our constable has been there also. Uh, also, I wanted to inform the residents that the uh, roadways with the uh, Z cutouts uh, done by PSENG, uh, I just wanted to inform them that when the, when everything is done, they will be mill, milled and paved once the work is completed. Okay, they're paving just half or the whole street? The whole know? street. From they're going to pave the whole street? That's my understanding, yeah. It's not a bad deal then. Okay. Uh, the quarterly tax bills will be mailed out the week of August 11th with a due date of September 4th. Uh, it, to be in the office by 4 p.m., there will be no extra grace time past that, past 4 p.m. Uh, the cameras on Hudson Street have been installed. Um, there was, uh, and actually everything should be completed by the end of this week. Uh, the server should be installed and everything should be up and running. Um, the new website, the HackSec website, uh, is coming soon. That will have also the redevelopment email blasts to the residents and, all, and developers to keep everybody informed. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, August 5th, is National Night Out from 6 o'clock to 7.30. And then we have the concert, Filet of Soul, on the green at, that begins at 7.30. And I would also like to congratulate Councilman Sims for Hackensack Junior Basketball. That was a really uh, great weekend. <clears throat> nice job. Thanks. And that's all I have, Mayor. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Resolution 263-14. The reintroduction of Ordinance Number 24-2014, refunding bond ordinance of the City of Hackensack and the <coughs> County of Bergen, State of New Jersey. The city providing for the payment of amounts owing to others for taxes levied in the city appropriating $8,650,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $8,650,000 aggregate principal amount of bonds or notes of the city for financing the cost thereof. May I have a motion, please? Offer. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LeBrosse? Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 24-2014 as reintroduced does now pass on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 18th, 2014 at 8 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with the notice of its reintroduction and passage on first reading and of time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. <clears throat> Resolution 264. Dash 14. It's an introduction of ordinance number 25-2014, a bond ordinance providing for Atlantic Street Park improvements by and in the city of Hackensack and the county of Bergen, state of New Jersey, appropriating $650,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $617,500 bonds or notes 
of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. I have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. <clears throat> Councilmember Battaglia? No. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Be resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 25-2014 as introduced does now pass on first reading and thus that ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 18, 2014 at 8 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the City Clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with the notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 265-14. The resolution authorizing accrued time payout for Joseph Ayubi. May I have a motion, please? Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 266-14. Resolution authorizing a crude time payout for James Dalton. Have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 267-14. Resolution authorizing a crude time payout for Mark Cunico. <clears throat> Have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 268-14. Uh, resolution authorizing raffle license for Hackensack University Medical Center Foundation and St. Joseph's Church. Have a motion, please. Offered. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. I'll abstain. Resolution 269-14. The resolution of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, authorizing the submission of an application to the Local Finance Board pursuant to NJSA 48-2-51 and NJSA 48-2-55 in connection with the issuance of not to exceed $8,650,000 aggregate principal amount of refunding bonds and or refunding notes. I have a motion, please. Roll for. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 270-14. Resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an interlocal agreement for local public health services, Borough of Bergenfield. I have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 271-14. It's a resolution authorizing support of Assembly Bill A900 loosening restrictions on stream cleaning. May I have a motion, please. Offered. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 272-14. Is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of Boswell McClave Engineering's proposal to implement the reconfiguration of the Main Street and State Street traffic signal system. I have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 273-14. Is resolution authorizing change order number one for DLS contracting for 2013 CDBG road resurfacing. I have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 274-14. A resolution authorizing renewal of liquor license for Majestic Lodge. I have a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. 
Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 275-14. The resolution is signing professional service providers and authorizing the mayor to execute contracts with such qualified professionals. I have a motion, please. Okay. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 276-14. Is a resolution authorizing tax appeal attorney to settle 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014 tax appeals caption Stellar Capital, care of MSNW, Continental Associates versus City of Hackensack, 2009 to 2014. MSNW Continental Associates Care of Normandy Partners versus City of Hackensack, 2009 to 2012, and 10 Hackensack Avenue LLC versus City of Hackensack, 2013 to 2014. May I have a motion, please? Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 277-14. The resolution assigning professional service providers and authorizing the mayor to execute contracts with such qualified professionals, municipal consulting engineers. Roll call, please. I'm, I'm sorry, may I have a motion, please? Offer. Second. <clears throat> Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Greenman. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. And the bills, resolution 278-14. Authorizing the payment of bills, the current fund being at $665,370.75. Total expenditures, $2,293,641.53. And inner funds and transfers at $99,907.98. I have a motion for the bills, please. <clears throat> Offered. Second. Roll call. Council Member Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Council Member Sims? Aye. Council Member Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Okay. It's time to open the meeting to the public. May I please have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Call for. Second. Roll call. Council Member Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Council Member Sims? Aye. Council Member Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. At this time, if you'd like to speak, please come up to the podium. In five minutes, please give your name and address to the clerk. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Council members, uh, I'm Perry Jackson, a 48-year resident of Hackensack, and uh, five minutes, that's more than enough. Um, we did a program called Who's Gonna Help the Homeless, and uh, that's been on a, a concern of mine uh, when I first saw some homeless people in uh, the area by Christ Church, and um, Gary, Jerry Levy had helped us, you know, create this program. And um, truly, it was a concern, it is a concern, and he said, the poor we have always, and uh, him we didn't. So um, I just want to really try and emphasize, even as I said then, that we should try and build a, a shelter where they had the shelter on Kansas Street, and it's, you know, complicated over there on the other side of River Street because, you know, the, the effort to get there without the traffic, you know, being a problem as it is. I said it would have been better that they had it where it was. But that was then, this is now. Um, they should have shelter for those who are residents of Hackensack, um, not just for the county, but you know, for some uh, you know, alter alternative uh, measures because um, um, I know that it's, it, it's something that you know, is a long shot, yet I think it's something to uh, think about. What should we put in place if, God forbid, there is uh, any type of uh, urgency of emergency for something to be uh, needed for shelter. And the ladies shared with me that sh uh, there was two fires that happened to, 
uh, near her house um, and she got away from both of them and you know I said God forbid a third one happens you know I'm just saying all this to say that we need um, a backup precautionary measure for those who are homeless in the city of Hackensack as well as for those who find themselves uh, destitute due to whatever measure so I just wanted to share that and I'll leave it at that okay thank you Next, please. Hi. Richard Salk in Hackensack, New Jersey. Uh, one of the topics I was going to discuss tonight, I will not out of respect. Um, they can wait two more weeks. Um, I'd like to back up a meeting or two, Mr. Mayor, and, and ask through you toward uh, Council Member Greenman a very disturbing remark she made on the night of the uh, approval of the settlement with the PBA. She used the term, there were glaring irregularities glaring irregularities in the process. And I know there's a difference in cultures. There's this little story about the little boy who cried wolf. And I want you to expand and to explain to the public and me what you meant by glaring irregularities in the approval process, negotiation process with the PBA. May I ask that, Mayor? Um, actually, Mr. Salkin, no, only because the message we passed last time that anything that could affect litigation uh, in another case that's out there right now, and I just happen to think any PBA negotiation talk might affect some of that litigation. You count. Go ahead. And count you one please. of uh, Retino v. City of Hackensack, Thank you. you know, touches on um, the PBA negotiations. Um, I would advise the mayor and council that if Ms. Greenman wants to re respond without divulging any attorney-client privileges or, or, or anything that is um, touches on Retino v. City of Hackensack, she may, but I would counsel her to tread very lightly on that subject. I'll take the advice, thank you. What does that mean, you're not gonna respond? Correct. Um, I've been the subject of your sliming, and I know basically you never have anything to back up what you accuse people of, Ms. Greenman. It's a shame, and it's a shame that you're still standing there, sitting there. Won't be forever. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Sultan. Chris Coley, 101, Prospect Dam, Hackensack. How are you, Mr. Coley? I still know a lot of city employees. Could you speak into the mic? I don't know if they can hear you back there. I still know a lot of city employees. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing undertone that councilmen are showing up at employees' work sites, parks, going to the DPW building, trying to bring employees up on charges, uh, shadowing employees, showing up on in its work sites, I think the city has, has had enough legal action. I don't think the council needs to do these kind of things. We have a city manager. We have department heads. I think they're more than qualified to oversee the workings of city employees without councilmen showing up at these sites. And I think it's a disgrace to the city employees that work here day in, day out, year after year, to have to have this type of treatment from councilmen. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hello, Mr. McCullough, how are you? I put uh, new batteries in my, <laughs> here he is tonight so I can hear somebody when they're talking. Thank you for that. And so I'm not getting any static. Uh, it's Charles McAuliffe, 119 Dorchester Road, Hackensack, New Jersey. That's my whole address except for 07601. I have a question. You were talking about, because of all the tax appeals, putting the homes at 100% value. How are you going to do that? Well, at first, if, if I may, the... Uh we would probably have to do another evaluation, reval of the entire city, which they did, I believe, in 2009, 2008, maybe. Seven. Um, seven. Following that, 2007 it was? Two, I'm sorry, 2007, that's when, it, yeah, that was 2007. Was 2011 was? It was the reassessment. That was a reassessment. Now- Is it cheaper to do a reassessment? Yes, it is, but 
we're at the point I think we'd have to do a full reevaluation first, then followed by our plan was to yearly reassess the homes to keep them at 100% so there would be no tax appeals. But That's, that would be every year that you'd be doing that because you yourself said there's a, a bad real estate market and every year it goes down. The values go down. If the values go down and you don't reassess them, they'll be open for tax appeals. Yeah. That's that's where the problem lies. That's that's where we've been getting killed. The values have dropped, what? dropped, dropped, and every year we're getting hit. Go ahead, you're chomping. Yeah, go like, ahead, like, go ahead. I want to get the bit. In Say terms something. of a, of, a, of a reassessment, okay, what what happens is the um, uh, the total net valuation stays the same, okay. Uh, but what will happen is it, it's just it's more fair. You know, uh, somebody's assessment goes up, somebody else's assessment goes down. So it gets a little bit closer to, to true market value, closer to what it really, uh, you know, and what how, reality is. How many is. years you, uh, are you going to do that? Well, the, the plan is, yeah, we were talking about doing it annually for about four years. And how much to, have you projected how much it's going to cost to do that annually? Yeah, uh, well, what we did was uh, we went out for RFPs, okay, and we're still in the process of, of looking at what the so RFPs don't know. are. So we don't know yet. Okay. So you should have just said, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. What is that? I'm, I'm thinking, though, the, the number, it, it's a, it's a, yeah, you know, a decent sized number, but it's still much less than what the tax is. You're aware that I'm a real estate broker and I do appraisals yes. mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, so I was just a little confused as far as which direction you were going, how you were going, why you were going to do it for five years, especially the market that's... Well, we were thinking of starting an offer for a few years in a row and then maybe breaking it down to two every two years. And then as the market hopefully finally, you know, levels out again, trying to eliminate it. But right now with the... Uh, you know, the way things have nosedived, especially since 07. Well, just to let you know, though, that the market is doing, it's going up, except for the city of Hackensack, which happens to be go down. Wouldn't it? Can you give me a reason for that? Well, if you remember, the, what'll happen with a reassessment, okay? The idea of the reassessment is strictly to try and reduce the number of successful tax appeals, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is like I said, so one person goes up, somebody else goes down. And by doing it annually, Okay, by staying as close to true market value as possible, it just means that uh, it should eliminate the successful tax appeals. People can still appeal the tax. There's an AMRT or CMRP or whatever from the New Jersey. Do we ever make a resolution to apply for some money for that, that program? Uh, I'm not familiar yeah. with that program. Well, it goes back to Christy Todd Whitman, where she, she put a stop to it. But it was, it was a, a, a charge uh, that they state of New Jersey used to charge the municipalities. You actually give back to municipalities on the tax. I think it's the EMR, AMR, or whatever. ERT. Yeah, well, the, the ERT the is where they collected tax. it, but the, the, other, the other portion was where they gave it back. Mm -hmm. And I think that the city has to make a resolution that they really enacted again because the state stopped doing it. Oh, uh, and, I, I guess. And it's not the program I'm thinking of. <laughs> Well, you're the CFO. You're the, you should know that, Ned. But I'll be happy to sit down with you. So yeah, yeah, that'd be great. If there's, hey, if there's money out there, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think there's a little money out there. That's just another way that we can get money. Out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCall. No problem. Hey, Art. Thank you, sir. Where's Debbie tonight? Eh? She actually has a day off today. All right. <laughs> Good evening. I like to be a fly on that wall when Chuck meets with the CFO. <laughs> um, a, a comment was made during the cow meeting public portion about me holding the city or raking the city over the coals regarding my Oprah request for a public document. Um, if I was raking the city, if I was trying to hold the city over uh, over the coals, you know, I would have filed a lawsuit by now. I think Mr. Morris knows I've been not been over 45 days I think since the request under law yeah 10 days if I wanted to hold the city over the coals as was uh, as I was accused of doing I would have filed a lawsuit a long time ago just I wanted to clarify that but I have not done it because I don't want to do that Thank second you. of all I noticed on your appointments tonight RFQs went out and they came back and you appointed a, an assistant municipal prosecutor I'm going to assume that that's different than the actual municipal prosecutor, correct, Mayor? Correct. Now, can you tell me then the job status of Mr. Catania? Well, right now it was presented to him. We had the city manager uh, notify him that we would not be offering him health benefits, and it was his decision whether 
we were going to, whether he wanted to stay on. I haven't heard back yet, so I'll defer to you. I haven't heard either, Mayor. I haven't heard any. So he has, what support. was the dead, we had a deadline on that. Actually, he's, uh, he has the option of uh, applying for COBRA. Uh, he has to leave in the, uh, August. Correct. Okay, so I, I employ the fact that we're taking away his benefits, which he should never have went on in the first place. <clears throat> if I understand your statement correctly, Mayor, is if he gives up the benefits, he would still be the admissible prosecutor. Is that correct? That's correct at this time, yes. Okay, you, I, I'm assuming then you think it's good that we have a, a, a gentleman convicted of a criminal drug possession crime? Mr. Nunemark, I won't possession? speak on that only because I feel that's been uh, expunged, expunged in, the, in the past. And I don't well, think I, that's I understand um, it may have been expunged. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to caution the, the mayor and council to, to not speak about whether an uh, employee may or may not have a criminal record. Um, oh. and advise him to, to not discuss that. Um, the only thing I would add is I believe Mr. Koster can add in that criminal background check is run on an employee before they're hired. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. That's the standard practice of the city? I would hope so, but I, I do think as the mayor and the council, we, we want to hold ourselves to a little bit of a higher standard than whether or not something has been expunged. And it took me five minutes to locate a very public document outlining <clears throat> the uh, disposition date, the reason for the disposition, the sentencing date. Um, and I, I just don't know if this is the kind of message we want to be sending, sending out to, uh, to the residents of the city of Hackensack that, you know, this council thinks that th that's okay. And Understood. I'm little, and I'm a little disappointed, John, I gotta be honest. Uh, my question is, an RFQ went out for the assistant municipal prosecutor this year. Why didn't RF, was an RFQ sent out for the municipal prosecutor? position no it was not okay now mr. Morris's firm submitted a response to an RFQ and, and their reappointment why is mr. Catania any different than the city attorney's firm in regarding of not saying now an RFQ and not a response now I, I also noticed that last year at, at your uh, at the reorganization meeting he was appointed on the first day without an RFQ Whereas again, I believe Mr. Morris's firm, although they were temporary, they did submit a response to the RFQ. So I'm wondering why Mr. Catania is receiving special treatment. Yes, and the difference is he is considered an employee of the city. How come, how come an RFQ didn't go out the first time? I can't answer that right now. I'm not okay. sure, to be honest with you, Jay. And, and, and the I'd have to double check back. I don't know, yeah, I'm taking your word for it. And I believe that maybe it didn't, but I'd, I'd have to double check. And the municipal prosecutors is, is, is the, excuse me, the assistant municipal prosecutor is not considered a, an employee or, or a part-time employee? I um, don't believe so, no. I'm not sure. Art, could you answer that, please? I believe it's just the, uh, an appointed position. Per diem? I believe the, the current there. assistant prosecutor we had did not reapply, so that's why there was a new application in there. No, I understand that, but why didn't an initial one go out for Mr. Catania's position? I can't answer that. I have to double check back on that. Okay. I'll try and find out. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, the, the one the one issue I would comment on is, is he's he's currently an employee. Um, so so obviously yeah, no, I don't, think, I don't that, believe you would do an RFQ at, at that time. I don't think you think you would do an RFQ for an employee either. It would be, it, it's a little bit different. But uh, Okay, I understand, but now I'm talking about, I'll take your word on that. But what about the first time? No, no RFQs go out for the municipal prosecutor? Because I, I can, I I can, I can ask a, one in a couple seconds more, of whether or not an he's I think one. it was more of an advertisement than an RFQ because he is an employee. Yeah. He's not a, he's not a, uh, a hired contractor okay. like everybody else. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. How are you, Joe? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Battaglia, um, my condolences. I'm very sorry for your loss, and I really give you credit for being here. I don't know how you can summon the, the strength to do it, but I wish you the best. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, I had a couple of things. One is there is a uh, on Poplar Ave right in front of the, the Fairmont Eats on the electrical line. There's been a pair of sneakers hanging from there which indicates usually drug sales or absolutely you know a small gang or a group of kids that just don't know really what they're doing either way it doesn't look good all right you'll it's take care of there. that i, care of I spoke it to it's in front of 30 um poplar it's my old address uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> and I spoke to the PSCNG guys early in June. They were working there to poll. They said they would take it down. They didn't do it. I went there today. It's still there. Okay. Yeah. I'll take your um, We'll get them down. And I appreciate that. Uh, it just doesn't look good for the neighborhood at all. So uh, the other thing is I've been away for a couple of weeks and I've been out of the loop, I guess. Uh, are we anywhere closer with an appointment for city manager at this point? Um, we had some discussion tonight. We're still um, having some conversations with some other potential uh, people, and there hasn't been a decision made yet, no. Okay, no, I wasn't sure if there was uh, if that was something that was going to be f met by the end of the summer or if, there was, or if we still just have a ways to go still on that. Well, we still have a few more interviews to do that have to be taken care of. Okay, no, I, right. I, I thank you. I just wasn't, like I said, I'd just been out of it, so I wasn't sure mm -hmm. where, where no, we're, we were with that. Not rushing it by any means. And, and the, the last thing, the, about two months ago I came and spoke about the house on, on Poplar where we were also discussing other houses that were being mm -hmm. bought out you by the group, uh, home? group homes. Correct. I was hoping to have attended that meeting where that was open. I was never contacted. And, you know, the only... And you know I don't come here to, to, to be critical, but last week I was available Monday morning and, and, and I had no idea there was a meeting Monday morning at 11 o'clock. I didn't even know those can be done. So is there a better way that we can just get these meeting times out and things like that? Because I really, you know, I'm off the summer, so I could have been here that morning, but I didn't even right. know there was a meeting going on. You're talking about the meeting for the group home? Yeah, you know, the, no, the just he, the, that one was a morning meeting as well. Right. I was hoping to be contacted and I did say I would be off. Right. But in general, just any You're other You're talking about meetings? the special council meeting we had? Yeah. Yeah, that, well, that was kind of an, emer that was an emergency meeting that was called suddenly because of something that had to be taken care of. Okay. But, um, and the other stuff was just added in there. I know we spoke about the group home and some other things maybe that morning, but uh, that was an emergency meeting. That was a little out of the norm. These Monday night meetings, combined meetings, are because of the summer concert series we found in the past. They always schedule the concerts on council nights, Tuesdays, which okay. the council really should be at these meet, at these uh, concerts that we have. So we took it upon ourselves to schedule a you know combined meeting on Monday so the council can attend the the shows down at the Green, okay. the city concerts. I think there's two left: one tomorrow night, yeah. which everybody should attend, yeah. and there's one next week. And and the last thing about that group home on Poplar, they tore up the street. They kind of repaired it. Mm -hmm. Who footed that bill? I can't answer that. I don't know, Art. It literally you know? went from one side of the who, street who to the other. My concern was... Do you know what kind of work they did? They went deep because it literally takes one side of the street to the other. My concern is what I was told when I asked the workers that were there, they said that they needed to make sure that, that there, are more there are more people living there now. I guess that the... the oh, that it was the could, water company. That they could open you. up the lines more. And I don't know if... It, my, you know... Did they put a generator on that? Well, house now would have United Water. Did they put a generator on that home also? Do you know? Uh, I don't know for sure, but they were supposed to be. I'll so if they have a generator, they usually have to upgrade the line from the street. That might be, it, I mean, it could be water and or gas. So is that the I city that's responsible for that, let's say, or is that the person? No, that, should be, that should be the utility. That Could we utility. find out how that was done? Because it, it, they tore it up one side to the other. Can you look into that, Art? Yes, Thank I will. You. And the street is already right beat up as it is, mm -hmm. and the patch job was not the greatest. I just had that conversation about Central Avenue, too. So, so I appreciate your time. Thank you so Thank much, you. and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summer. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. You too, Joe. Good evening, Jared Wexler, 89 Burn Street. Um, Mr. Mayor, just sitting here, um, something that was said just didn't sit right. Yes. Um, we said that the municipal prosecutor, that no RFQ was necessary because he was already a city employee. No, 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 no that's not what I meant. It, there's okay. a difference, an RFQ usually is for a, an outside contractor to okay. bid for work in the city. Um, when you post a job, out there, mm -hmm. it's it's you apply for that job. It's it's a little bit different. It's not quite. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but it's a little different applying for a, a, an employee's position as a prosecutor than applying for a, uh, you know, like your firm did as a uh, an outside contractor as a different process. That, that is correct. All right. That's that's what it knows. He wasn't already an employee. He became an employee when he was hired, but he applied for the position. So I guess it's not considered an RFQ. I don't know what. I guess it's just a, a job application. I, Mr. I, I, Mr. Mayor, I would just recommend that the, uh, before the next meeting, Mr. Coster look into 
um, the, how the job was posted in July 2013 and fill the public in. Oh, we can do that. We'll back check on how, how it was posted. Yeah, yeah because my mm -hmm. question is, um, was Mr. Catania just left off this list because of the situation you spoke of with the benefits? Because we have the public defender and the assistant municipal prosecutor who are city employees the same as the uh, municipal prosecutor. So there just seemed to be an inconsistency in, in, in what we were saying as, as far as um, why he was left off here. Well, we needed a new uh, assistant because the one could not be, renew his uh, contract due to a, uh, or renew his employment due to a conflict. So are, yes. but you're saying that if somebody was an existing employee of the city, they didn't need to be on this list, whereas Navarro Gray has been the public defender. I'm, I just, I'm just trying to straighten out Go ahead, Joe. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to take up your time. I'll be quick. I, I, I don't believe, and I'll have to review the ordinance, I don't believe that the public defender assistant prosecutor are employees. They are? It's been a long time since I looked at it, but we'll take a look at it. Maybe we shouldn't have done it. I'm just trying to iron out the inconsistencies. Thank you. Uh, we will check. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Good evening again, Kathleen Salvo, um, 184 Hudson Street, Hackensack. Uh, Ms. Greenman, um, when you became councilwoman, you took an oath when you were installed, and Sen I remember Sen Senator Weinberg said that at that time that it was a privilege for you to represent Hackensack. You swore to faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the office uh, of a council member. Um, I am, I'm a little disappointed with the way you've been acting at the past council meetings. I had great faith in you. I thought you were going to come together with the rest of the team and, and bring Hackensack forward. I thought you were going to be part of the solution and not the problem. Um, rumor has it that you are now laying the groundwork to file suit against the city or possibly join a Mr. Rettino suit. Is there any truth to that rumor? Do I get an answer? How does this work, Mr. Mayor? She, she can answer if she likes. Just look at her. No, not an answer. No answer? Okay, because we're, we're very disappointed in you, and we had faith in you. We thought, you, like I said, you were part of the team. And your actions, well, when you're here, because you missed a lot of meetings, um, and when you are here, it's not, I should say, behavior conducive to a councilwoman or somebody that we want to see help Manhattan Zack move stop forward. This. this is a total lie. I am not. It's I'm saying nice things. I am not. I am saying nice things. I have. I am very concerned about what's happening to this group, and I see her as being the problem. And all of us have. Well, most. I have to say, most of us in this room have seen that. And I just want to know: Is this going to continue? Are you going to do a reversal and and come back to be part of the group or part of? The, the solution rather than being part of the problem. And there's not, I'm not saying anything detrimental, anything against you. I just don't understand why you're acting like this and what, what the, what the, uh, what, why your behavior has changed. Okay, I'm not getting the answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Regina DePosco, Parker Avenue. Um, I don't usually write down what I have to say, but last time I had to, and this time I have to, because I have to be very careful what I say because of certain things that have happened. And I have to be very certain that I get to say what I want to say, okay? Um, so that is the only reason I have it written down. Um, you may not like what I have to say, but I have the right to say it anyway. Right. You might not like the way I say it either. And just a little background, I'm the sixth out of eight children. Survival, I had to be a little louder, okay? But, and I have the right to be loud. I can yell, I can scream, I have that right. It is my constitutionally 
protected right to stand here and say what I want to say. Anyone who tries to silence me, just as someone just tried to silence Mrs. Salvo, simply because you do not like what I have to say is attempting to violate my rights and the city will be held accountable and hopefully there will be personal accountability also. I have been attending council meetings for years. I have attended more meetings than most of you and that's just in the past year for some of you. It seems <laughs> my cardinal sin Please. seems to have been speaking out against Tom and Anthony. Guess what? They're not here any longer, but I am. You are public officials. You need thicker skin. If you want to sit up there, slights, slights, insults, real or imagined, come with the territory. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen or suck it up, cupcake. A little history lesson for those of you not so well educated on the topic. My first sentence is paraphrased from a sign held at a freedom of speech rally in February 2009. Mr. Mayor, your wife held that sign. Are we going there again? Is a public official once again going to attempt to violate the First Amendment rights as well as possibly other rights of Hackensack citizens? Are we going down the litigo litigation road again with a public official? It's ironic. Seriously, that rally, I didn't know any of you before that rally. I knew nobody that's that's here that's involved that those are the circumstances that got me involved in coming to council meetings and speaking my mind because I felt at that time it could have been me who would have to defend the right to say what I wanted to say five and a half years later it is me I am the one who feels threatened and harassed by a public official it seems some of you had no idea what you were getting into and what it means to be a public official Maybe a re review of case law with regard to New York Times versus Sullivan is in order for this council. It should be required reading for all public officials. The residents can say what they want because you are a public official. And because you are a public official, it does not mean that you can use your office to do whatever you want and to attack residents personally. Unfortunately for the residents of Hackensack, we did not know the trouble we were getting with some of you. You are in office to do what is right for the city, not for any one individual, including yourself. Check your egos at the door. Some of you are more, more concerned with being right than doing right. If you see yourself in what I have just said, please either take steps to correct your behavior, get help, or resign. Because if you are not willing to do what is right for the city, then you do not have what it takes to be a council member for this city and you do not deserve the privilege of representing us. Finally, a couple of quotes from United States Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas. Since when have we, Americans, been expected to bow submissively to authority and speak with awe and reverence to those who represent us? Another one. We who have the final word can speak softly or angrily. We can seek to challenge and annoy as we need not stay docile and quiet. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to speak? <clears throat> My name is Loretta Boisseau. I live at 264 Beach Street. I've been living there for 23 years. Um, throughout the years that I have lived there, it's been fine, no problems. Landlord, everything is nice. But all of a sudden, two and a half years ago, they moved this tenant in. She's a constant smoker. The lease stipulates you cannot smoke in the foyer. You can't smoke on the stoop. Go to the curve to smoke. She's constantly smoking. I can't open up my windows. I'm inhaling these fumes. I live on the second floor. It's a two-garden apartment building. If I open my apartment door upstairs, the fumes are killing me. I have to spray every time I come in and out. 
I tell the management, I write letters. I've been writing letters for over two years. Nobody helps me. And when I complain, then they, the, the person downstairs or the people downstairs, they threaten me. They threaten my life. Then um, I go out, if I come home, uh, I have my music on, I'm cleaning my house. The cops are there every other day. I come home, I got tickets in the mail. I got tickets stuck up under my rug for my second door. I'm being harassed. What, what, what rights do I have? Ma'am, what are the tickets for? The ticket said it's for loud, for loud <laughs> noise. I'm there by myself. If I'm in the house cleaning, vacuuming, or, or, or playing the music while I'm cleaning my house, I leave out when I come back. I have a mat up under my door going upstairs. It's glued to the floor in the four corners. I come home, there's tickets from the police up under there. I get a ticket in the mail. I've been to the courts. What rights do I have? I'm retired. I've been retired for seven years. They have all kind of people downstairs in the foyer. I complain to management. I write letters. I get it's nothing I can do. They just tell me keep writing letters. I've been writing them for over two years. <coughs> can I, I did uh, not retire for all of this. <clears throat> Would you be so kind as to give your management company's name to the uh, city manager, please? Yes. Before sir. you leave? Thank yes. You. Could you tell me the, 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 for, for when you play your music, what is the law pertaining to that? There, there is a, an, an ordinance for, for Latin music. Could you, um, no, it's, yeah, but can you tell me what it is so I'll, I'll know what's going well, on? Because part I of it is the time of day you're doing it, and the other one is how loud it is. This it's is during the, the day when I'm cleaning my house or something. I'm there by myself. It's not, it's not that loud. But like I said, they're ringing my bell. If I leave home, my niece will call me, auntie, come home. The cops is at the door. What have I done wrong? What, what I will do is I'll direct the city manager to look into the. I'll find out some information. What's going on there? It, it sounds, sounds a little unusual. You get in the daytime. Of, yeah, this is really daytime. blasting that music loud. No, this is daytime. It's unusual. You'd be getting afternoon, tickets. Afternoon, one o'clock, mm -hmm. twelve o'clock. To <coughs> hear, hear the cops come again, harassing me. What what did I do? Right. I'm going to have the city manager look into that and see what's going on. Can you leave him your your contact information? Yes, please? I will. And your and your management company's. Yes, I will. Information? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the public who would like to speak? Steve Gelber, 304 Clinton Place. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm sure that you've read this, but I just want to read it to you from the uh, city code. The establishment of the Office of Municipal Prosecutor, 149B. The city prosecutor shall be appointed by the city council of the city of Hackensack and shall serve at the pleasure of said council and shall receive as compensation such amount as shall be fixed by the city council. At the pleasure of said city council. Do most city employees have that stipulation in the city code? I uh, don't believe so. I don't know whether that's because they are a yeah, the position of prosecutor might be held at a, a different, uh, I don't want to say esteem, but different level. I'm not sure. But he is an employee. I, I mean, there's no doubt about that. So at, at, at the pleasure of said counsel would mean that you could hire or fire him as you please. This is true. You're correct. So doesn't say in there the reasoning for said pleasure. You no. could fire your, your city manager for at your pleasure I and mean, you you don't like the way that he's doing his job if you don't like that the way that the municipal prosecutor is doing his job if you don't like information that you may have read in the papers from the 1980s about him it, what reason do you need to remove this man from office well the reason being is and again it's, it's I'm going to defer to the our council I'm not going to go too deep into um, Mr. Catania's past, because I feel if it's been expunged, it shouldn't be brought out here from this dais. Past or not, he's at your pleasure. Understood. One thing you said is I, I don't have an issue with his work, because from what I've been told from our court system, he's doing a great job. So that, that can't be, 
you know, an issue for me because he's doing a good job as far as acting as the, the municipal prosecutor. As far as bringing up his past as a reason to dismiss him at our leisure, which we could do, I, you know, read between the lines on that one as far as um, the expungement situation. If you're catching what I'm you trying to say there. On July 1 of 2013, along with many others. Yes. Many of us have come up here for a very long time criticizing those appointments. You got rid of Mr. Amarado, and I was mm -hmm. very happy. You got rid of Mr. Rotino, I was elated. You're, you're backsliding. We all had a little bit of hope here that you were all moving in the right direction and you were going to take all of their people with them. Tonight, you renewed a lot of appointments and you kept him in his place. You're all backsliding. We were all getting very happy. We're backsliding. You're not moving in the right direction any longer. Just. I understand your point. You're well taken. And Ms. Greenman, I don't think that anyone here is going to stop coming. If you don't like it, I think that maybe you should stop coming. Permanently, that would be like a resignation letter, not just when I feel like coming, I'll come every other meeting, every third meeting. Just permanently, just you'd resign. Go. Don't hold your breath. Okay. Um, Ms. Greenman, um, Mr. Password got up and she explained to you a little bit about the First Amendment. I would hope as an attorney you would know a little bit about the First Amendment. Um, you can look at you can look at Mr. LeBros and say, are you going to allow this to continue? But even if you ask me to stop, I'm, I have my five minutes and I can say what I want to say when I'm here. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to hope you're going to answer it. Have you gone to any law enforcement agencies um, and made complaints, uh, signed complaints, made incident reports about any residents of the community for their actions in speaking publicly about you? It's up to you to answer, Ms. Green. It's not up to me. <laughs> because in my humble opinion, I would say that doing such type things, that would be harassment, that would be intimidation, and that would be trying to stop somebody from exercising their constitutional right. And to me, that's a big, big problem. Thank you, Mr. Galbraith. Anyone else in the public like to speak? Seeing none, a oh. snuck in under the wire. I know. Thank you. No Good problem. evening, all. Uh, Gwen Jackson, 138 Union Street. I've been here before with regard to Ferretti trucking, and uh, Danny Ferretti and I did have a conversation, and it has gotten much better. Um, you I know, do so that. yes, uh, and so. Um, you know, I just want to keep you updated as to what's going on. And as I said, I would be coming back if they were violating and parking in front of my house with the garbage trucks. I'm still a little concerned because they do seem to have a few more trucks. And uh, I don't know what the outcome is going to be eventually if they continue to purchase more trucks because they are hauling garbage and other materials. So, and I know our... Our street is zoned commercial residential, but I'm just a little concerned with all the redevelopment going on. And if, if the city of Hackensack wants to uh, be a city of pride, I'm just a little concerned. Uh, also, um, on the website, there is the Project Pride Initiative. Is there anything still going on with that? Um, or Actually, or we, we haven't. We are pride. due to have a, a meeting. We will have a meeting this month, Mayor. Yeah, because I haven't seen anything updated on yes. it as of last year, so I just mm -hmm. was wondering what's going on with Project Pride Initiative. It's a good initiative. It's just no, uh, I, I agree. You know what's I going agree. on with it. That was uh, instituted by previous city manager, interim yeah. city manager, but mm -hmm. uh, I have Mr. Casa look into it and see we'll where we're going with that. Okay. I'll take care of it. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna still <clears throat> sneak under the wire just. Quickly, Daniel Corolla, 88 Clinton. Uh, Mr. Mayor, are you planning on uh, filling the uh, redevelopment czar position that you created? At this time, no. Okay. At this, so is that? Are you looking to potentially get 
what is that, an RFP, RFQ? Or are you looking into it? Is it just an empty, vacant position? Is it something that you're not going to fill? Or we're, not going to, we're not going to fill it at this time. Okay, no. so there's an ordinance, though, that still calls for that position. Is there not? There is an ordinance out there allowing for that position, yes. Okay. Allowing for the position. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but at this time, you're not going to fill the position. No, it's not being filled. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. So, okay, time for public comment from the council. Mr. Battaglia. Okay, I want to thank on behalf of my family for all the emails and phone calls related to the passing of my father. He's resting now with my mother and my brother, so thank you, everybody. And Mr. Sin, there was a beautiful program that you got Saturday and Sunday in Carver Park. I just passed like for two, three minutes. And I want to thank everybody for coming and be safe. Thank you. Okay, I'll take a quick look over my notes. Um, I think I heard a lot of good things tonight. Um, some suggestions and some attempts to see the public working together with the city. And I think that's great. I think that's what we really want to see. And that's what these meetings are all about. Um, I want to thank you, Chuck, for you know agreeing to come in and, and work with Jim. I mean, anyone, you have some information in some way that we think we can we can improve and help the city. We, we welcome that. I mean, I think that's the best thing about these meetings. Best thing about having folks come here, not just to complain, but to bring things to us and be part of the solution. And and and, and I thank you for that. Um, also, I think it was Mr. Nunemacher. You talked a little bit about. Oprah, and you may, I think you made some comment about you not wanting to rake us over the coals. So if you're really sincere about that, um, we have been working very, very hard on trying to simplify the Oprah process, because absolutely you guys are entitled to this information, but we're trying to make it as cost effective, as easy for us as possible. And I know we've talked about this a little bit before, where when I was on the other side of the fence, I came in and I worked, I wanted things periodically, so I came in and worked with the CFO to actually come up with a report that made everyone's life easier. I got kind of what I wanted, and it was much simpler for the city. And the CFO and I have had some conversations, and if any of you folks are interested and willing to do that, we're willing to work with you. I mean, folks, uh, many of you want the same kind of bills or bill type information each month. If there's some way that we can generate that information from a report, yes, Jim, that, like, that would be like great. I mean, that would be when you want this information, it's a push button for Jim and you get the information, it's a win-win for everybody. So please take us up on this, you know, call up, make an appointment through the city manager or through a CFO directly. Um, it would really help the city keep the cost of these things down. It, we, we would understand the information you want and provide it to you uh, more efficiently, more expeditiously, and a heck of a lot cheaper. So, so that, that's something we definitely would like to encourage. Um, you know, a couple of comments about who we're hiring or who we're keeping and, and getting rid of certain people that are connected to certain people. I mean, let's think about what we're all saying here. Um, we're all against the same thing. We, I mean, none of us want anyone in a position because they're there for some political affiliation. Right? We agree. We all agree to that. So the folks that are here, if they're here and they're working and they're proving themselves and they're doing a good job, just to, to remove them from that position because it's a perception that they're politically connected to someone else is just as wrong as hiring someone under that pretense. So what we're doing is we're going through, we're evaluating people that are participating as employees, evaluating people that are participating as contractors. And if these folks are doing a good job for the city, there's every reason to have them continue to work for the city. And it's to your benefit as residents that we do that. So we are, uh, you know, there was no intent that some comments are made to clean house. I mean, that was not, that was not our purpose, our intent. Our intent is always to provide the best service to our residents that we can possibly, that we can possibly supply, uh, supply at a cost that's reasonable. And we'll continue to do that, and, and I hope you see that. Thanks for coming, and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Sims. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Like Art said, we can continue our summer concert series tomorrow with Mayor Soul and his National Police Night Out. The best event will take place on the green Park street from the courthouse. Hope to see you all there. Thank you. Miss Greenman. Good night. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, Leo, my condolences on your 
your your dad, and it's got to be real tough after just losing your mom. But uh, yeah, thanks. Anything you need from this council, just call there. And anybody in this audience, I'm sure will be glad to help you if you need to help with something. Thanks. Um, I attended two nights of basketball, not just one, down at Carver Park. Uh, had the little guys first at six o'clock on Saturday, followed by a high school team. But last night, had an all-star team from New York playing an all-star team from New Jersey, and it was about as good a basketball as I've ever seen. That includes professional basketball. I've never seen anything like that so close up. Uh, the refs let these kids play. They weren't kids, they were grown men. They were some of their late 20s, early 30s. Uh, the refs let them play, and it was some real good basketball. And it was, uh, it was a great event. There was no, uh, no problems. Everybody had a good time. Everybody interacted. Uh, there were some, some laughs, <laughs> and so we, we had a good time. So I thank you for that program. Uh, Mr. Sims runs a good basketball program. Uh, again, tomorrow night's concerts, National Night Out. Um, Filet of Soul is a great band. You know they're local. A lot of the guys from Lodi, I think one or two guys might be from Hackensack. It's a great event. Come on down. We need, uh, we need to fill this park. Last week was a little disappointing because... Uh, I don't know, it just seemed to be less people last week than usual. We usually pull about six, seven, eight hundred people at these events. Um, the Duprees is rescheduled. They were rained out originally, so yeah. they're next week. August 12th. What's that? I believe it's August 12th, man. August 12th. Yeah. Yes. All right, so next Tuesday will be the Duprees. Mm -hmm. Great group. Um, the Douglas quote, Miss Regina, thank you. As I recall, I read that from uh, the dais the night I was first sworn in as a councilman and I still believe in those words. So uh, thank you everybody for coming and uh, have a good night. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Oh, we need a motion to close. Huh? Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Greenman? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Thank you. Stephen?